This episode is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey, what's up everybody? Vegetarian Zombie here. Before we continue onwards with C-Sharp, I thought I'd take a moment to talk about Integrated Development Environments, otherwise known as IDEs. More importantly, I'm going to walk you through getting your code completion working based on a suggestion from a viewer in an earlier episode. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, please take a moment to like this video if you find it helpful. Feel free to take it to the next level by subscribing. That lets me know you find these videos helpful and motivates me to make more. Okay, let's take a look at why IDEs are important. If you've never worked with a programming language, a code editor may appear to be just another text editor. And this is true on some level. The truth is, you can edit code in any text editor like Notepad, or even using a command line program like Vim. Yet, IDEs do a whole lot more. In fact, once you get used to working with an IDE, you'll never go back. Thankfully, you can get most IDEs for free now. The first thing is that they offer error checking. As you type in your code, the IDE will evaluate the code and report any potential errors. For instance, in code, correct spelling is essential. Take the statement debug.log. If you spell debug with a lowercase d, your program will break. An IDE will catch that mistake for you. In some cases, it will even offer a fix for them. Next, IDEs provide discoverability. When I type debug followed by a period, all these options are provided to me, and you'll soon see it works with your own code as well. Believe it or not, it can even provide early error checking. If I see different options than what I'm expecting, then I know I'm doing something wrong. IDEs also include built-in documentation. Mind you, you may still have a documentation window open, but you can access everything directly in the editor in the context of the code. For instance, say you want to know more about a mono behavior object. You can hover over it and get a quick tooltip. You can even jump to the source and read some developer notes. Some editors will even include inline documentation. Okay, let's dive in. But before we do that, here's a message from my sponsor, Kadeco.com. Kadeco is a site for developers made by developers. With hundreds of instructors from around the world, you can learn about topics such as native iOS development, native Android development, and even multi-platform development with Flutter. Kadeco also features hundreds of free articles, including topics on game development covering both Unity and Unreal. As a pro subscriber, you can access a library of thousands of videos on a range of development topics. The curated learning paths are designed to teach the basics of development in a friendly and supportive way. Pro subscribers also have complete access to all the books at Kadeco, such as the Unity Apprentice, that aims to teach you Unity by creating a series of different games. Get started on your programming journey today by heading on over to Kadeco.com. Okay, let's get started with making sure our IDE is all set up. I'll start with Windows first. When you first install Unity on Windows, you'll be prompted to install Visual Studio Community Edition as well. Unless you are using your own custom solution, then make sure you keep this option checked. Now, when you start Visual Studio Community for the first time, you'll be asked how you want to use it. Make sure to select General Usage, after which you'll be prompted to install additional components. Select the Unity component. That's all you need to do. You now have all these awesome IDE features available to you right out of the box. Okay, now comes Mac OS and Visual Studio Code. This is going to take a little more work. First, make sure you install both Unity and Visual Studio Code. You can find Visual Studio Code at code.visualstudio.com. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna install it again. Once you have it installed, you have to do some extra configuring. First, start up Visual Studio Code. I've reset my system so it uses the default settings. First, I open up the last project. Now I'll write a simple debug statement. Notice I get no discoverability. There is no inline documentation. Now I'll create an error and there's no notification. 
In short, I'm just working with the text editor here. Yes, it gives me syntax highlighting, which is still useful, but I get nothing else. Okay, let's unlock the full power of Visual Studio Code on the Mac. First, you need to download .NET. .NET is a framework which is used by C Sharp to write applications for a variety of uses. Head on over to .NET.Microsoft.com slash en hyphen us slash download. Download .NET 7.0, then install it. You may run into some additional issues, so download the latest version of Mono. Mono is the open sourced version of .NET. Head over to mono-project.com. Select the download button and select the Visual Studio channel. Once you download, make sure to install. Okay, now head back to Visual Studio Code. You need to install the C Sharp extension. On the left hand side, click the lowermost button. It looks like a bunch of boxes. This opens up the extension manager. This is where you can extend Visual Studio Code in an infinite amount of ways. Search for C Sharp. You'll see an extension published by Microsoft. Now install it. Once installed, you need to make one slight configuration option. Click Code on the menu, then choose Settings, and then Settings again. Search for OmniSharp Use Modern Net. Uncheck the checkbox. Restart Visual Studio Code. And now you should have a working system. Here I'll write a log statement and you'll see I get code completion and documentation. You'll also see these reference notes, which tells me where I'm using a variable. Okay, that seemed like a lot of work to do to get everything up and running, but it makes a huge difference when writing any kind of code. But now, with your code editor all configured, you should be ready to dive deeper into C Sharp. Just one last thing. Once you have your IDE configured, you need to make sure you are actually using it. In Unity, on Windows, select Edit and then Preferences. On Mac OS, select Unity and then Settings. Find the External Tools option. In the External Script Editor, make sure your IDE is selected in the dropdown. Should you ever wish to switch IDEs, you'd need to set the new IDE in this dropdown. And that's it. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like. And as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.